Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, today, uh, we're excited to host another spotlight session. Uh, the, today, uh, we have one of our mentors from the American Family Life Institute uh, joining us to talk about careers in venture capital. So uh, we're really excited to host this. Uh, ben, uh, AmFam has been one of our key partners, not only from uh, using mentor spaces, but as well as one of our investors. And so uh, we have John here, who is part of uh, part of the leadership team at uh, the AmFam Institute, um, sharing uh, how you can get how you can break into venture capital. So I'm Kunal, one of the community managers here at Mentor Spaces. I'm really excited to kick off this uh, discussion. Uh, I'll pass it over to Randy, who will facilitate the conversation with uh, Rob and and John in a second. Uh, but I wanted to mention that we will, are we are recording this. So if you are interested in sharing this with any of your friends yeah. after the session is over, please uh, go to uh, Mentor Spaces and uh, allow and then go to the space where uh, this session is posted, so you can share uh, this with any of your friends who may not have been able to attend. Uh, the other note I wanted to mention before we pass it over is uh, if you have any questions at any point in this session, we have the Q&A channel open uh, in uh, Zoom here. So you can feel free to uh, chat your question. You can also raise your hand if you wanted to uh, uh, share it through your voice uh, and we can unmute you and you can go through and uh, share your questions. So but with that, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Randy. Um, also look out for some polls. We're gonna have some polls throughout this discussion that uh, John will have. So uh, let's let's stay engaged uh, and uh, have a, an amazing session on uh, careers in venture capital. Randy, you wanna take it over? Yeah, thank you so much, Kunal. Uh, my name is Randy Emelo. I'm a program strategist here at Mentor Spaces. And I have the pleasure of, uh, and the honor of uh, moderating today's discussion. And with us, we have uh, Rob, and John, and to the managing, uh, I'm not sure exactly what your official titles are, but uh, on the management leadership team there uh, and have existed in the world of venture capital for quite a while. So they're gonna be able to share their uh, wisdom and experience with us today. Um, and really without any further kind of warm up, let's go ahead and move it over to John. I know that uh, John, you've prepared a few slides to help our audience understand a little bit more about the world of VC sure. and especially social uh, impact investing. Yeah, thanks, uh, Randy uh, and Kanal. Um, I'll do a quick intro of myself and I'll let Rob introduce himself just to give everybody a sense of uh, where we're coming from and our background. So um, when I've got out of school a long time ago now, um, uh, over 30 years ago, I got into the tech industry and through the tech industry, I found my way into venture capital with a corporate venture capital group at Intel Corporation. And so uh, it's really been a great journey and a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed doing venture capital throughout my career. I didn't always do venture capital. I was in and out of the career path a few times, uh, did a startup, worked for some big corporations, but based on all my experience, I think it's a great place to be. If you love startups uh, and want to support them as opposed to start your own or be in one or go both, do both, uh, I'd recommend it as a, a career path for you. But I'll kick it over to Rob and he can do a quick intro and then I'll give you a couple of slides about a career in venture capital. Thanks, John. Um, so uh, my background is somewhat similar to John's um, in that, um, you know, I've spent time both in venture and in, um, in startups and a couple of bigger companies. Um, uh, I, I found my way, you know, supporting the tech industry somewhat by accident um, in a, uh, a small investment bank that was working with um, uh, high tech and, and biotech companies out in the Bay Area. Um, and from there, went to business school and then um, ended up in, in venture. Um, and then I left after my first stint in venture for um, over 15 years um, in startups and um, and, uh, you know, a couple of larger companies, um, but had always, you know, continued to stay close to it and, and, you know, made some angel investments and things like that. And then had the opportunity to, to join up with John, um, you know, in the, with the AmFam Institute. Um, and so this is, this is my second stint. Thanks, Rob. Um, and Rob and I have been working together on this particular fund. Our official name, by the way, is the American Family Insurance Institute. 
for corporate and social impact. So we're a social impact fund, which is a whole nother thing to talk about. We probably won't have a lot of time to talk about all the different kinds of uh, venture funds, but we'll touch on it today in our, in our short time we have today. But before we get started, I have a couple of slides to show you about a VC career. Um, but I just wanted to ask a question to those of you who are, are uh, attending today about, have you ever explored a venture capital career before or thought about uh, or been interested in that? Or is today the very first time you've uh, ever looked at it? And so well, this will be a total new introduction for you. The poll is up. Great, thanks for sharing. Let's go ahead and share the results. All right, so we got a half, half of the folks here have been very interested, probably looked into it before. A few people, one in particular uh, has very, uh, or actually I guess about half, this is the first time they're either looking at it or very interested. So this will be kind of a, a quick one-on-one summary of, of, of you know, what it's like to do uh, venture capital. So like I said, I've got a couple of slides, eight to be exact, I'll show you. So I'm gonna share my screen right now. Um, and then I'll go through those and then put your questions up and you know, we'll try to either answer those as we go along uh, or we'll uh, answer them at the end uh, as we can. So I wanna make sure, uh, are you seeing my slides there? Yes, perfect. Okay, i go to full screen. All right, so uh, a career in venture capital. Now I was doing exploration and building some slides and I found some great slides. Um, from this gentleman named Subrata uh, Mitra. He works for Excel Ventures, which is one of the bigger well-known uh, venture firms in the world. He's actually based in India, which doesn't really matter. Uh, venture is venture, there are differences in different markets, but he had some excellent slides. So I thought I'd share some of the things he developed with you. So, you know, there's different roles you play as a venture capitalist. And, and one of those th things is, you know, how are, what is your role? How do you act within the fund? So, um, you know, what you're doing is you're going into the marketplace and one of the key things you do is try to find great um, entrepreneurs, great founders and teams that have ideas to, you know, grow and scale a company. And in venture capital, we look for high growth, fast growth companies to make the venture capital business work. And I'm not gonna go into all the details like that, but tr more traditional slow growth businesses, Main Street businesses generally don't work for venture capital because they don't grow fast enough to make your money back. Uh, the other thing you need to do is be able to look at market trends. So we're often look at, we talk about, there's a wave of innovation coming. It might be tech innovation or financial innovation and understand what those waves are and trying to catch that wave before it, you've you know, gone, it's passed you by, or even going too early and you miss the wave. So you gotta look at market trends. Um, you have to build a team. Um, so uh, when you look at uh, the different skills and so on, that's an important thing to look at. Um, people have experience in various uh, backgrounds and certain things you might wanna invest in. Brand new people who may bring in fresh perspective. So diversity has been a lacking thing in venture capital over the last 30, 40 years. And we want more diversity in it because we need people with fresh perspectives and bring in a different mindset than people who may have been around for a while. So that's important. And also the ability to fundraise. So where do venture capitalists get their money? Uh, venture capitalists, uh, generally we're talking about, are called general partners, but you have these things called LPs or limited partners. And that's where you get your money from that you distribute into the startup. So you have to go fundraise yourself from those. So those are some of the key roles you play as a venture capitalist to the fund. And then of course, once you have money to, to invest and you start investing it, you have to play a role to the companies that you develop in your portfolio. So what are the things you do for them? Well, first of all, you give them money. Um, that's, that's an important thing to say. Um, uh, that opens up, that's a transaction that opens up the relationship, but we often call it a marriage because it's a long-term relationship. Generally, you have a company in your portfolio five to seven years on average, but it can be longer than that. Most funds are 10 years or longer. So you're going to have a very long-term relationship more than likely with this uh, company that you've invested in. You want to provide your network to them uh, so they can leverage that uh, for customers, for additional investors, uh, for hiring, you know, they have to build a team. 
uh, for mentoring. So that you bring to the party, which is really important. Oftentimes you'll join the board, uh, either as an observer or a voting member. Not always, but many times you may choose to do that. And so you have a whole role to play in helping the company make strategic decisions about where it's going. You're not there to manage the company, but you're, you're there to help the management team decide where to go strategically. Um, usually startups are gonna raise more money after that initial round. So you're gonna help them raise that additional money going forward. And you're gonna to try to help that founder, that entrepreneur through this life experience that's very trying. It's a very hard thing to be a founder and you're gonna be a partner with them uh, to help them get through the ups and downs of uh, doing a startup. So those are a couple of the important roles you pay in a VC. So here's what the, uh, the, the career progression generally looks like by title. You know, most people, if they're coming out of uh, school, uh, usually with a graduate degree, not necessarily, but, you know, they may join a, a venture firm as an analyst where they're doing a lot of research, and then they graduate up to an associate or senior associate uh, uh, after that, doing a lot of the work to do the research and to actually do the due diligence and reach out to the startups to find them to build your pipeline of investable opportunities. So that's a lot of the work that goes in um, that everybody does in a firm, but if you're uh, a junior member of a firm, you're doing a lot of that every day. Um, the next big step for you then is usually moving up to a principal or a VP level. Now you've got, you know, three, four, five, six years of experience under your belt uh, and you're making your own decisions about what to invest in. You're making decisions about what the investment thesis should be and you're working with the associates to bring deals in and so on. Uh, next step is a director or partner. Um, if you're part of a corporate a venture fund, you know, you may not be a partner because a partnership implies you're an independent firm. You may have a, a, a title like director. And so now you're in the, the, the senior leadership uh, of, of the fund uh, and making key decisions about the fund strategy and so on. Managing director or managing partner is usually the person who is uh, um, leading overall. Um, and as you get into those more senior positions, you have a lot more responsibilities about team management, of course, but also uh, limited partner management. Again, I made the point earlier, where does this money come from? Well, whether it comes from a corporate parent or some type of other limited partner, like a family office um, or a pension fund or some kind of institutional investor, you have to manage those relationships uh, as well as work with the startups. So that's where the responsibilities grow as you go through this career progression. So skills, uh, I'll quickly touch on the skills uh, required to be a VC. So this is a people business and that's why you, you, know, you either love it or you hate it. You know? And I think most people know they wanna be in venture capital because they love working with people. So your ability to work with founders, recognize what's going on with them. After you've worked with enough um, different uh, startup companies, you get to see some of the same things happening, right? Um, as these companies progress in their lifetime. So um, that's really important for you to have that kind of pattern recognition. Um, and, you know, to be a successful venture capital fund, you have to, you know, look at market trends and the, the tech waves, as I mentioned before, and, and make decisions about where you're gonna make your investments. There's a large world of opportunities for investments out there. You've got to pick a sliver. Uh, even if you have a relatively big fund, you know, there's so much out there to be invested in. You've got to make some decisions about where you think the market's moving and hopefully get in front of it. Uh, and you have to have the ability to learn quickly um, and unlearn, I think is a good point. Um, so some things that get stuck in your head because you did it, you were sex successful with it five or 10 years ago, aren't the things that are going to be successful in the next five or 10 years. So you have to have that ability not to get in a rut in your thinking. Um, I already mentioned pattern recognition. Um, another important thing to mention, again, this is a people business, so empathy is really important. These entrepreneurs, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, are going through a wild ride uh, of doing a startup and trying to manage a startup. Um, and so, you know, you have to, you know, try to put yourself in their shoes and, and understand what they're feeling. Um, and the fact that when they talk to investors in particular, they're going to get a lot of no's. So um, you're probably going to have to say no 99% of the time, but that doesn't mean you can't be empathetic for what they're going through. Also, you know, styles of communication, you know, different ways to communicate with people, 
If you can identify their different style of communication can be very helpful. And then of course, a key thing we do uh, is you know, identify uh, deal flow, develop a pipeline of opportunities, and then uh, a process that we call due diligence to uh, go from an opportunity to an actual investment uh, through that pipeline. And so that's a big part of the skills required to be a VC. Couple more, um, once you've made that investment, um, you may choose or be asked to be part of the board. And as I said earlier, then you're really helping steer that company strategically uh, about where they're gonna go in the next one, two, three, four, five years. Um, and so that becomes a, a very time consuming even much more time consuming than making the deal itself, part of your role as a venture capitalist. Um, intellectual and emotional honesty. So this is important, isn't it, as being a human being? But I think in this type of business where you're working with human beings, um, that you have to be honest with yourself, be honest with your team, be honest with your portfolio companies, because you're spending a lot of time with them. And if you're not, it comes out at some point, just like being part of a family, right? Um, if, you, if you're not honest, it, it, it shows up eventually. So that's an important thing. Of course, it's an important to have financial knowledge. Now, you know, I think a lot of people look at a VC career as a financial career, and there certainly is a financial aspect to it that's important. But I'd say, you know, that's stuff you can learn. Um, you can learn, you know, of the modeling that goes on in finance, whereas some of the soft skills I mentioned a few minutes ago are things that you know, you have to develop as a person, uh, but I think the finance uh, skills you can learn and develop as well as fundraising. Now, just like startups come to you and pitch you uh, to get money from you, you've got to go to these limited partners and pitch them. So you have to really develop that skill as well about differentiating yourself and selling what you're doing that's better than the next VC firm down the street. All right. So if you take that all together, uh, I think um, you know what you what you want to look at um, is a couple of major buckets here um, or lenses that you've got to develop as you look at opportunities. So uh, the market that these startups are serving, and the very first thing in that bucket it says is size. So you have to pick markets that are big enough for the venture math to work, that for your fund to be able to make money itself. So that's an important capability that you can develop. And I already mentioned growth. These tend to be fast moving, fast growing companies that you have to um, identify that, that the growth is gonna be there. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, competitive advantage and all those other things. Um, business, of course, um, fundamentals are something you have to be able to uh, identify and talk about and defend when you're trying to make the investment. But the last thing I'll, I'll put a lot of focus on, particularly if you do early stage investing, you know, so-called seed stage or A stage investing, a lot of it has to come down to the team because the product isn't there yet. Um, they're still developing the product. The customer pipeline that they're developing isn't there yet. You're betting that this team is going to be agile enough to figure it out. So you really got to develop that capability, that lens about this is a team and a founder that I believe in. Um, and I think they can figure this out over time. And that's a bit of a leap of faith. It is, um, it's subjective, but I think that's an important part of, uh, being a VC. Um, last thing I've got to say uh, on the slides is, you know, so what does your average day look like as a, as a VC? So I mentioned fundraising, you have to, you, you do that periodically, you know, every, you hear people talk about, we raised fund one, we raised fund two, we raised fund three. You, you do that every two or three years, typically, um, where you have to raise additional capital so you can keep running your venture firm. Um, building a solid team, like any small team, it's got to be solid because if it's not, um, you're not going to be successful. Pipeline of deals, of course, um, and the selection process by which you decide which of those pipeline in the pipeline you're going to move forward with. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time helping companies and founders. I actually think this is probably one of the most important things is your interaction with those founders across a portfolio is probably one of the biggest predictors, I think, of how well they'll do and how well you'll do in supporting them. And then, of course, at the end, we all hope for an exit uh, in which the company is acquired or it could go public 
or now we have these things called SPACs by which they go public um, in a different way. And that's when you get your money back. And that's where you can make hopefully uh, your fund uh, financially successful. So that's, uh, wanted to give you a sense of, you know, all the skills, you know, what a day looks like, what a career progression looks like in a very condensed time frame. Um, so I will end the slideshow here and I'd be happy to take any questions uh, you guys have uh, about um, uh, a career in venture capital. That was fantastic, John. Thanks for that great um, high level overview. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and get uh, Rob's opinion on a thing or two. I'm going to kind of bounce back and forth. You, you put so much great foundational information out there. Um, you had mentioned, uh, John, that there tend to be some hot waves, as you called it, uh, that or trends that are taking off or happening in the market. Um, Maybe I'll go over and uh, see if Rob, if you can jump on that. What are some of the hot waves that are happening right now and maybe in the greater VC world? And then also talk a little bit about social impact investing in, in particular. And I'd like to hear a little more about what, you know, what distinguishes that kind of investment. And you know, is that a hot thing right now? Sure. Um, so I mean, I think in the on the broader sense, you know, we are seeing some pretty big trends, um, you know, some of which are, you know, have been propelled by, you know, the pandemic. Um, so, you know, uh, education and ed tech, you know, with, with um, students needing to be remote, I think there's been a, a real emphasis there, um, a real change in the way that we access um, healthcare, um, you know, with, with um, telemedicine and things like that have really taken off. And then I think independent of, of the pandemic, one of the things, um, you know, certainly that a lot of people are focused on now is, um, you know, uh, crypto, uh, cryptocurrency, and, and I think the bigger trend there, what, what people are colloquially calling Web3. Um, so, you know, how uh, the blockchain is impacting, um, you know, which is a type of technology, but as an underpinning of crypto is impacting, um, uh, you know, startups. And, and certainly, you know, I spend some of my time focused, um, you know, in the financial technologies area, um, you know, with one of our our thesis, you know, is is um, trying to improve the financial lives of, of Americans and, and backing companies that we think can do that. And so, you know, we know that that's going to be impacted by by crypto and, and blockchain, um, you know, at some point. So thinking about things like that. Um, and I, I think it's not so much that you need to jump on every hot trend, but but you do need to be aware of these and how they're going to impact, uh, you know, the types of companies that you invest in. Um, you know, whether you look back over decades. You know the emergence of the first generation of internet companies and why some of those worked and didn't. Um, you know, uh, mobile was really a, a really interesting trend. I mean, we, as little as ten years ago, you know, not everybody was carrying around a smartphone, right? We were on first generations of of iPhones, and and penetration wasn't anywhere near what it was. So you know, we go through some of these trends, um, and they do have a, a pretty strong ability to impact um, uh, technological adoption, um, you know, for consumers and, and businesses. So it sounds like, Rob, what I hear you saying is, and, and I heard you bring this up as well, John, is that you know you need to exercise and have some sense of foresight. Like you don't, you don't need to be way out there, but you need to know kind of what's happening now and you know what segments of the market are actually kind of rising. And uh, and you want to, as John, you mentioned. Uh, you're looking for fast growers. You know, you're looking for organizations that um, that are at early stage, and then you can, in a sense, catch them early and help to fuel their development. And uh, and you want to make sure that there's enough runway, there's enough there's enough you know development arc uh, in that market segment for for that company to actually be a good investment. Yeah, I mean, certainly there's an element of the rising tide, right, kind of lifting lots of boats, um, but also it's hard to build a super fast growing company when you're fighting the market, you know, at least have, having sort of markets be neutral um, and neutral markets are OK, um, but but fighting a market um, is, is pretty challenging. So, you know, you, having a sense of what's going on in the market. And we only have a few minutes left. I can't believe it. I want to hear so much more about this. Um, of course, we, we enjoy a special relationship with your organization, and we're so grateful. Basically, all the things that John 
said that you know you know venture capital groups are looking to do we here at mentor spaces are the beneficiaries of that you know the guidance the support the helping us with strategic direction obviously funding and so on all that stuff is super uh, important i just want to come over and john ask you the question you know what gets you up in the morning what is it <laughs> about all these aspects of the vc life that that uh, that you really enjoy the most yeah, well, hopefully I gave the impression I love getting up every morning because, you know, supporting these, you know, these are individual companies with real people that we touch every day. And it's, it, you know, it's super exciting to see them succeed. It's also exciting for us when they're struggling and, and we can help somehow um, to get them through a tough period. Um, and because we're a social impact fund, as we we're saying, that's, a, I think, a trend in itself on top of financial trends or tech trends is that I, I think particularly with the next generation coming along here is, you know, what do we do this all for? Why are we in business? Yes, we need to provide for our families and so on uh, and for ourselves, but we'd like to leave the world a better place than when we got here. And that's not always the case in business, uh, that that's an, a, a goal. So that's a mission for ours. It's closing equity gaps in America is our snappy mission statement, but it, it, gives us the guidance that we're making these investments and helping these startups out because they're making a difference in the world uh, in very real ways with new solutions uh, and new products that they're bringing to market. So I couldn't ask for a more engaging you know, career and uh, hopefully that that's, uh, everybody's felt that. Yeah, I really appreciate that perspective and we really are grateful that, that you're here and that uh, your organization is funding these socially responsible uh, organizations that are rising up. Um, it's, it's kind of good to be able to uh, have your work align with your passion and your mission. And uh, I, I sense that from both of you, uh, that there's a, there's a great deal of inspired passion behind that fuels your work. Um, I know that we're out of time. I'm going to pass this over to Kanal. I am going to ask if uh, if your organization would like to maybe do a follow on. It would be interesting to have you uh, talk a little bit about some of the the organizations that you're supporting and what some of their socially responsible impacts that they're looking to make. Yeah. You know? Well, first of all, go to our website. So we're amfaminstitute.com and you'll see videos about most of the companies and our, our focuses and so on. And happy to follow up with anybody uh, who's on the session uh, about uh, some of their questions or, or going a little deeper. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, John. Uh, Kanal, over to you to close us out. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Thanks, John. Um, and really giving you your perspective on, on careers in venture capital and sharing uh, trends in the market. We have a few questions that may not have been answered by uh, the panelists here. So if you, you, uh, you yeah. had a question that wasn't, wasn't uh, answered, feel free to go ahead and post those questions inside of the FAM space. And John and Rob can certainly address those uh, since we're trying to be cognizant of their time. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and address those kind of asynchronously. Um, if you're interested in connecting with Rob or John, uh, we have a poll question here. So please uh, answer that question and we'll make the connections uh, based off of their time and availability. Um, and then finally, I wanted to make a note that we have another session next week. It actually uh, dovetails nicely from this conversation. It's all about the basics of being an entrepreneur. So if you're interested in being on the other side of the spectrum, uh, not from the VC perspective, but actually being a person who is uh, starting their own company, uh, who you know is able to take the risks and make big uh, promises uh, to uh, to potential customers and users of, of your of an idea that you have, then uh, join that session. It's on December seventh at uh, four p.m. Eastern time, uh, and we'll go and discuss you know with entrepreneurs what they've done to get started and how they're. Uh, building their businesses today. So look forward to hosting that session with mentors from the community um, and, uh, and and really having an awesome discussion around that. So with that, we'll go ahead and close this out. Thank you all for joining today. And if you have any questions, uh, yeah, feel free to post that in the mentor spaces. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.